New in the last hour, fuel leaks have forced NASA to scrub its historic Artemis 1 launch. There are a pair of backup dates in the near future, but they'll have to fix the problems first. You're looking live right now at Kennedy Space Center right there in Cape Canaveral, where up to 200,000 people had been waiting this morning to watch NASA make history. The launch would have represented a milestone in America's quest to put astronauts back on the moon for the first time since the Apollo program ended 50 years ago. Mel, kind of a bummer of news this morning, but this stuff happens. Mission Control paused the countdown clock during the fueling process, and we know that involves super cold and highly explosive gases, so they want to be careful. Yeah, I mean, you know, and they had that conversation. They said they were going to take 10 minutes to kind of make some decisions. It took them a little longer than that, and ultimately that decision was to scrub the launch today, that window opening again for two hours on Friday. But this is the replica that we wanted to show you. One of our executive producers actually created this with his 3D computer. One of the things about this, the Orion rocket is the most powerful rocket NASA has ever built. So of course they are taking extreme precautions. You know, this would be a waste if it wasn't successful. Now we know that the entire system that you see here is called the space launch system. It can hold nearly 1 million gallons of that super cold hydrogen and oxygen. And the first leak of explosive hydrogen happened in the same place as another leak during the dress rehearsal that they did in spring. The second involved a valve that had caused trouble back in June. NASA thought they fixed it, but I want to kind of take this apart because this is, these are the boosters that you see here on this rocket. And then the engine, which they had a problem with the third engine as well that they had been monitoring. So officials saw that crack or some other defect in the core stage, and that is the orange part of this replica that you're actually looking at right now. Now, the second valve that we talked about, they thought they fixed it, they hadn't. They later discovered that there was frost built up in one of the engines. Thankfully, unmanned, they had the three mannequins in there, so you know, never any risk to astronauts on board, but eventually they are hoping to send the first minority to space and also the first woman. And we will be watching as this happens. We'll pull this out again on Friday and put this together you know it took him 12 hours to build it um, only five dollars Vic which is a lot cheaper than the four million of the real Artemis rocket that hopefully we'll see go off on Friday back to you five dollars four billion right four billion dollars mm -hmm. versus five dollars so <laughs> Chris has a good recipe right there when the mission finally does happen, it will last up to 42 days as the rocket travels to the moon, loops around it, and then returns to Earth. It will take nearly a week to reach the moon, which is about 240,000 miles away. Are we there yet? The Orion capsule will then enter a distant orbit, putting it farther from Earth than Apollo at 280,000 miles. The big test comes at mission's end as the rocket hits the atmosphere at 25,000 miles an hour on its way to Splashdown, which is going to be in the Pacific Ocean, by the way. So it's going to take off right here on the Atlantic coast and potentially splash down on the Pacific side. Again, Again, the, the next, next launch, launch attempt will not <laughs> take place until Friday at the earliest where the launch window will open at 1248 in the afternoon. There is another date that could be September 5th with a launch window opening at 512 in the evening. So we're going to bring that to you live when it happens, which may be Friday. And again, then we have a few days after that.